investigate and cross examination. Okay, so part of the cross examination has to be done every single time. You say, you know what, I think I'm good. I think I'm coming to work. As soon as you come to work, everything needs to come in contact with you. So now I want to curb this at home. We have to stop cross contamination. We can stop. And pretty much the why. Joe Lamanca, J O E L A M A N C A. And what is your uh, position here at Kroger? I'm the store manager here at uh, Kroger Ashton Place. Okay, Joe, can you um, talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the challenges that uh, you've experienced while during this epidemic and like some, uh, some of the struggles that you've gone through to ensure the safety of your employees and also as well as your customers? Yes, uh, as with everyone during this epidemic, uh, a great deal of challenges. Uh, probably the biggest one I have here is where we have about 200 associates and it's constant information coming out every day uh, from Kroger, from the government on updates on the safest way to, to do our job, to protect our associates, to protect our, our customers and, and to enforce all the policies that we need to. So that's been a real challenge is every day keeping everyone updated uh, so that everyone knows what's going on and we do that through various meetings, one-on-ones, uh, -on group meetings, uh, information. We have a pass out every day that we get to every employee on any new updates and, and just keeping the information out there and answering questions that people have. Our associates have so many questions about so many different things and getting the right answers at the right time. So uh, how was this training today beneficial and how do you see that going to be helpful with the job environment? It was beneficial because we learned some things that we didn't know. Uh, we heard several things that we, we already knew, but we learned, learned a lot of new information too. And also just having a good support system, uh, knowing that we do have a, another group of people that we can turn to with questions, with issues that we need help with. And, and that's very, very important at a time like this. Okay, Joe, uh, anything else that you think is pertinent to the, the conversation or anything else you'd like to add? I, I just like to add that uh, you know it's a, it's a very difficult time, particularly uh, you know not only for our country and our community, but uh, in this type of business. But uh, still trying to find some positive out of it, and there is positive in seeing how our associates and our customers and the people in the community have reacted to it, worked together, followed the policies. Uh, er everyone's working well together as a team, and uh, there'd be no way to fight this this pandemic without that. Thank you.
Okay, first name Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, last name Park, P-A-R-K. Uh, rank Sergeant First Class, he's seven. And you want MOS? Yes, sir. Uh, my MOS is 12 November. You guys are Task Force Cree. Task Force Cree. Uh, I'm also full time with ATEC. Okay. Okay, sir. Mark, um, can you uh, describe a little bit about the the training that you uh, provided to Kurgers today, and um, talk a little bit about the other training you provided to other retailers throughout the state? Okay. Um, so as far as as far as retail uh, MTTs, which we conduct. Uh, to provide really decontamination training and PPE training. Um, it's not really to get too in-depth and confusing uh, to the retailers themselves. It's just generalized information that they might not be aware of or at least thinking of at that time. So when we go into any retail establishment, whether it's a gas station, convenience store, all the way up to like we're in today and, and into a Kroger, um, we start off with just basic principles of PPE that we'll wear day to day, latex gloves, um, some sort of surgical mask, where, whether it's an M95 or a homemade, uh, but some sort of face protection. Um, down into decontamination, just staying clean, whether that's on your person or within the establishment, uh, the, the amenities within each location uh, that patrons that come in might come in contact with on a consistent basis. Um, so really, as we go through the entire training process, um, we focus a lot on the shipments that do come in. Peer-to-peer um, -peer contamination is number one priority, trying to keep our social distancing. But to curve the pandemic um, is to mitigate secondary contamination. And that secondary contamination will start with retail stores where um, the community still goes in to get their necess uh, necessities and, and items that they need on their day-to-day -day basis. So if we can come in and teach uh, the establishments um, some proper techniques as, as far as keeping that back stock and the shipments that come in as clean as possible before stocking it onto the shelves, it, it'll just better, better help curve uh, the cross-contamination that is likely to happen. So, uh, of course, as servicemen and women, we get one out into the community, we get a lot of times we get the thank you for your service. And I heard you basically turn that around. Talk to, talk to me a little bit or talk a little bit about that and why, why you can do it. Um, why I like to put that out uh, in every training uh, session that I have is as service members, especially when we've deployed, um, you'll go to work day to day. You get up early in the morning, you get to bed late at night, and uh, trying to conduct your tasks as best as that you can, knowing that there might be a day that you go out on a normal task that you've done hundreds of times over, and you pull your ticket. And it's not something you think about every day, but it's always in the back of your mind, well, in this sort of situation, uh, all of these employees at any retail establishment that still has their lights on, they make a choice every single morning that, you know, coming out, fulfilling their duty at, at, at their place of work um, is taking a risk, uh, not just for themselves, but for their families, uh, for their loved ones at home. Um, so they are experiencing some of the same situations as that we experience as service members. So for me to sit here and you know, help provide them a little bit of training, um, but understanding the situation that they're in and decisions that they make on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's nice to be able to turn it around and say thank you for your service um, because that is exactly what they're providing. It's, it's beyond the day-to-day -day service. Um, so many establishments are closed, but they choose to keep their lights on to keep their community fed um, and maintain. So it's, 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 an, it's an honor to look at them and say thank you uh, for your service. Awesome. So, um, what, is the, what is the one key thing that you're trying to um, give to these folks as far as like uh, flattening the curve? I know it's one of the things we keep hearing over and over, but like what is the, what is the one key thing that uh, retailers can do um, to help 
mitigate for the spread of this? Um, in my opinion, it's it's just managing cross contamination and, and giving them a better understanding of what that actually means. Um, since the beginning uh, of when I started uh, with Task Force Cree, if I ask any employer, or any establishment about their shipments and cargo that come in, if they disinfect and decontaminate those those shipments, most of the time they're a little bit confused of what I mean. So that's for for, for a retailer. That, that's the start of secondary contamination. Is their employees might be in line with a checklist as far as keeping themselves clean, but as far as getting the stock off a truck that might have come from a, uh, a hotter area of COVID-19, but getting that stock off the truck and on the shelves as cleanly as possible, I think that's, that's the biggest thing we try to get across. Not really, that's about it.